Hey guys, welcome to the first episode of Obsolete Season 2. The, uh, the last season kinda ended a long time ago, and um, I apologize for that. I haven't been really on the ball with getting out new stuff. Uh, you might remember the last thing that I did was an episode for the new tech back at the end of 2012, and yeah, it's, it's 2014 now, so we have to do something about that. Now... This episode is going to be one segment. Now, normally I've been known to do two or three segments in the past, but we'll just play things by ear for now. I'm going to keep it simple, one segment per episode, probably bump that up. And um, otherwise, you're going to get pretty much the same content. I'm going to be dealing with older stuff and uh, using it in new and exciting ways. Maybe some newer stuff with a little bit of an old school sort of twist to it, but we'll just have to see how that plays out. Now, we're going to have to think about how this is all sort of new. So, if you remember the last season, everything was standard definition, and, you know, I used the XVID codec and all that fun stuff, but now I've switched over to a DSLR camera, so I'm doing HD, and we're going to be putting it out in H.264 or something, whatever the newest, latest, greatest codec is. And um, you might see some differences. We have some lighting, we have a little bit better sound with the recorder over there. We have widescreen, so there's all this extra room. And um, I'll be playing with that as time goes on, because I'm not necessarily an expert in all this, but I don't know, I'll figure it out. So this one segment that we're going to be seeing in this episode is Commodore 64 floppy backup. Now this is akin to the segment that I did for the new tech back almost a year and a half ago, but um, Commodore discs are a little special and I'll get into that a little bit more. Now I filmed the majority of this episode last year, almost exactly a year ago, and You'll probably notice some continuity differences, a little, a couple of references that might not really make sense anymore, but the content's still good, and um, I've recorded a little bit more content from that time, which I can't push out just yet, but that's probably coming up. So, I hope you're excited for Season 2. I am finally getting around to it. So, without further ado, we're going to get into Commodore Floppy Backups. 
Okay, so I imagine at this point you've probably seen my um, floppy copying episode of the new tech, which I'm promoting heavily right now. If you haven't, go check that out. Um, and actually, check out all of their episodes, because it's a good show. But anyway, so I covered a lot of uh, disk formats that you could potentially copy. Uh, I think I used an example of an IBM floppy, but there's also some uh, TRS stuff, as well as other more obscure formats. But what if you had one of these guys? Commodore 64, or really any Commodore computer. What we need to consider is that with the Commodore computers, the floppy drives had both side read and write. Well, your standard five and a quarter inch floppies um, are only one-sided, so the drives are only going to be one-sided. So you have this sort of discontinuity between the sides, and that's why getting an image from these old Commodore discs is pretty difficult for all of these new little gadgets for floppy copying. However, there's a solution. I picked up one of these. This is a Zoom floppy. And uh, it's about $35. You can get it online. There's also a, an IEEE adapter option, which is an additional couple of bucks. So I got it. Uh, you don't really need it, but who knows? They're, they're going to stop making these. The adapters might be hard to find. So it's good to have it just as an option. So you have your Zoom floppy, but what else are you going to need if you want to back up all of your C64 discs? You're going to need one of these. So this is the Commodore Disk Drive 1541. I believe this is the second revision of them. Um, it's really big. It's pretty heavy. On the back right here, it's got fuse, power, on-off switch, and two of the six-pin DIN adapters so you can chain drives. Um, you can see the Zoom floppy. It has one six pin adapter micro USB so obviously you can use the micro USB to hook up with your computer and you can use the six pin adapter for your drive now getting the cables is probably going to be one of the easiest things to do here a uh, micro USB cable if you have a cell phone charger or an external hard drive you probably already have a micro USB cable so that's no problem if you actually have your original Commodore setup and you had the $400 disk drive option, you already have the cable that you need that would normally go between the disk drive and the Commodore. But if you don't, they are a 6-pin DIN cable, which I believe are fairly, I guess, fairly easy to find if you're looking. They're not specifically for Commodores, but this type of adapter has been used in many different things. So Finding one online or something shouldn't be too big of a problem. So you have your cables, you have your hardware, what else are you going to need? Obviously you're going to need some floppy disks. So a little word of warning, these disks are now decades, decades old. So you're going to be lucky if you're going to be able to get a complete image off of them. However, this um, device, it, it doesn't matter if you get a whole image, it will read back partial images, it'll just copy and copy and copy, and if it hits a bad block, then it'll just say, hey, it's a bad block, let's keep going. So you can get partial disk saves, and having something saved is better than having nothing at all. So now that I've explained what all you need to get your Commodore 64 copying going, Let's actually go over to the computer and hook everything up and see what we can do. Okay, as you can see, I have the Commodore disk drive hooked up via 6-pin DIN to my Zoom floppy, and the Zoom floppy is hooked up via USB to my desktop. So now, if you go to the GoForRetro.com website, you can download a uh, package for Windows full of software that allows you to interface with the Zoom floppy. I'm using the Windows version. After you unzip the file, you have a firmware updater, installer, run test, some documentation that's not very helpful. So I already ran the installer, and that just basically makes a directory on your hard drive full of the binary files that you can use. So I already have everything installed, and everything's plugged in, so let's do a run test. So as you can see, it found my drive. 
which is a 1541, so it has that, right? And it's kept on drive 8, which is the default. So we don't need this screen anymore. Now, if you look in the bin directory, you can see that there's a bunch of executables here. We're going to be mainly focused on D64 copy because we want to copy our disks. Also, you can see I was messing around a little bit earlier, so let's get rid of this file. There's a ton of other little utilities that you can use. They're a little bit out of the scope because we're just looking for recovering stuff from our disks. So, by itself, Zoom Floppy does not have a lot of documentation for these executables. So if you go to opencbm.tricholoidus.net, then you can find lots and lots of commands here that you can use with the executables. So, for example, we have the B command, which makes it so that only occupied blocks are copied over. We have uh, TAC2, so that does two-sided disks. There's some examples down here. So, we're going to need a disk that we can copy. So I'm going to use everybody's favorite here, Christmas Carols by John Henry. So, put this in the drive right here. Now, over here, I've already navigated over to the OpenCBM bin directory. We're going to be running D64 copy. I wanted to use tech V for verbose, so we have a little bit more information. I set my own retry count here. Just, I thought three is probably a good number. Eight, that's the drive number, and Christmas Carols at D64, so we know where we're saving it to. Be sure that you get these in the correct order, because if you do Christmas Carols, D64 and then 8, it will write to your disk. So order really matters here. So now that we have the command how we want it, we can hit enter. Alright, and it failed. Sometimes it does that, so just give it another try. And here we go, it's starting to copy the tracks. Each track has a certain number of blocks, so we end up having 683 blocks. So this is going to take a while, so you can go put on a cup of coffee or something. So, in the meantime, just bring up here, I have a Commodore 64 emulator called CCS64. It's still pretty well maintained, last updated on May 2012. I'm using an older version right now, just because that's what I got. So I'm actually going to show you how we can load up these disk images here and see what's on them using an emulator. So this is still going here while this is going. We can bring up our emulator. And click OK. Alright, so this here brings up everybody's favorite Commodore 64 basic screen that we all know and love. Do file, and then C64 files, and uh, choose our disk drive device 8, like I said earlier. So I'm already navigated over here to the correct path. So C, open CBM, bin, and then that directory right there. If we go back over here to our um, command prompt, we can see that it's having read errors and it's giving up. This is pretty common because the disks are so old they haven't been maintained very well. Until we intervene this will just keep sitting here in a giving up state. So if we just do a control C that will catch the SIGIN and then it'll exit all the copying. So now back over here in our emulator we have Christmas carols at D64 so we can examine it, we can boot it, we can fast boot it. I'm just going to boot it normally with F3. Now you can see Christmas carols is being loaded. It's got the copyright and all the information there. You can order there's a telephone number, should probably call that. Uh disk error, of course, the disk is corrupted, so there's going to be an error. Don't have the disk manual, so let's just press any key. Hopefully we'll get somewhere. 
giving some beeping noises. Don't know if that's supposed to be like that or if it's because it's corrupted. Let's just run. Let's run A. See if this works. All right. Well, looks like we have some lyrics down there. Um, have some music notes kind of bouncing all around. So no music. I'm guessing that's a problem with the corruption. But as you can see, you can successfully make an image of your C64 discs and run them, and they sort of run if they're not too corrupted. So just goes to show you that discs just sitting around your house, you can still, you know, access them and play them on a modern computer. Alright, I hope you guys enjoyed that segment on Commodore floppy archiving. Um, I plan on going through some of my floppies, and I have all these other floppy backup solutions, which I really wish to explore. There's a ton of them out there. Um, I even have an interesting one that there's only like five or ten units made, so it'll be really interesting to see if I can pull some segments together with that technology. So this concludes episode one. As I said earlier, shorter episode than normal. I don't know if I'm going to keep doing one segment episodes or tack on a bunch of segments like I usually did. I just wanted to, right now, get the content that I had out already instead of just having it sitting on SD cards, just unseen by anybody. So, as always, um, I'd like to give a special thanks to Moonlit for just everything he does, and he made the um, newer version 2 theme song that you heard at the beginning of the episode. So, hopefully you guys like that as preferred to the first one. And I'd um, like to thank Ethan and Pat for actually... Um, it's kind of funny, but the Commodore 64 and the disk drive originally belonged to Ethan who I've known for eight or nine years. And then he sold or gave it to Pat, and then Pat was trying to get rid of them, so I took them, because you know, you have to keep it in the family. So thanks to those guys for, I guess, the hardware. I'm not entirely sure exactly how they passed it amongst themselves, but I ended up with it, and it's all in good shape. It's still right over here. So, um, yeah, as I said, I hope to get out more episodes soon. There's uh, a lot of stuff just sort of piling up around here right now, and everything's a little hectic. But I'll definitely scrape together some more content, and as always, I'm taking suggestions. So, if you want to reach me, the easiest thing to do is just go to obsolete.com. There's contact information for email, Twitter, Facebook, Google+. IRC, everything is on obsolete.com, so make sure that you check that out, and um, keep playing with all technology. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Show you shortcut. Error. You show me Error. a shortcut. Yeah, Error. me show you a shortcut. Error. Can I? I have to touch your computer though. Be my Error. guest. Error. 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 See that? Loading. Ta-da!